Hey, welcome back to the Artie Quitter, Artie Censored on Live Podcast. One of my favorite human beings is on the phone. That's right, Conrad Hilton Jr. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, it's the great Mike Pachetti. Mike just wrote a wonderful article about this podcast uh, uh, for dudes, uh, stuff dudes like dot com, oh, a great website. Oh, no, uh, uh, no, it's for the intro bang, actually. Oh, that. I'm sorry. It's for intro bang. I was giving bad information. Oh, that's okay. Uh, no, it and what's intro bang? Uh, it's, it's a site that's pretty good. They have all great people on there. Uh, Ron and Fez are part of it. From, uh, oh, Ron and Sheriff. Fez. Oh, yeah, I heard of that. Okay. Yeah, I gave my Super Bowl predictions. Of course, the one that was right. Oh God! Uh, it was fun though. I wrote an article about you, Dan, uh, Chris. I know. I, I, I just read it. I just read it, and well, of course, Mike Boschetti. Welcome to the show, Mike. Yeah, what up, Thank Mike? Thank you, Ron. What's hey, up, guys, Mike? What's going on? Hey, yeah. Joe. Hey, buddy. Hey, where's Dan? Is he drinking coffee? <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, He's hey. here. Hey, Dan. So, Mike, um, I was thinking of you. Uh, you know, being a heavy set gentleman myself, I, I don't cut my toenails as much as I'd like to. And I just did this morning and they were very, very abnormally long because without uh, a living girlfriend anymore, I let myself go even more. And, uh, it really got circus like grotesque, the length of my toenails. <laughs> and, uh, cause it's hard to get down to them with uh, my gut in the way. Uh, oh, and it took a while and I thought of Mike and I thought of how long, your toenails must get and and <laughs> how how I, often do you cut your toenails, Mike? And how long do they get? I uh, I wear shoes all the time and uh, slippers, you know, socks. That's not the question. That's not the question. The question is <laughs> the question is how often do you, if ever? Okay, so what you're saying is, are you saying you never cut your toenails? Well, I let them fall off and grow naturally. Oh. <laughs> Bingo! That's the jackpot answer we were looking for. Fall off. On Artie Lang's grotesque comedian friends. <laughs> How do they fall off? What do you mean, Mike? Eventually your feet are going to fall off and they're not going to grow back. You just let your toenails fall off? No, I'm only kidding. I, you're not, no, you're them. not. No, you're not. <laughs> Dude, you're not in an ISIS prison camp. You could cut your toenail. I know, but you know, I'd rather it's easy to cut the, the you know, the dumb, not the thumbnails, the regular. You're, well, your finger, your finger regular nails. Nail. Of course, it's easier to cut your fingernails because they're on your finger. Your toenails are difficult, but God does this. God, God presents you with little grooming challenges where He wants you to live up to the challenge and maybe well exude exude some effort and and fucking, you know, cut your toenails. Joe, well, I well. If I lose all the weight into it, I can wipe my butt and see my penis again. At least. But that's what I mean. You just you just lost all this weight, and you look fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Why don't you use that uh, flexibility to cut your toenails? It just doesn't make any sense. What about well, the? You must be constantly getting laid now that you lost the weight. I, I, no, I'm still the same guy on the inside. I need you guys to man me up. Well, <laughs> man you up or girl you up? You want a chick or a guy? No, no. I, I mean, <laughs> I need you guys to man me up for sure because, I don't know, I go after the wrong woman, I think. What woman is that, breathing? <laughs> I was going to say, Eddie. <laughs> what woman do you now, go after, Mike? I don't know what. I like them a lot younger than me than the hot, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's, that is not always good. You know, younger and so. hot. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you know, should. Have you tried older and grotesque? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody to drive in a station wagon. I understand, no, Mike, no. but you sound very uppity, very condescending, a little <laughs> no, too I'm, choosy. Mike, you, 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 Mike you're a stand up comic who makes four figures a year. Uh, and you're, well, and you're, well, obe five, you're you know, obese so and you let your toenails naturally fall off. Well, I'm, I'm That's just, not exactly the obese. definition of most women's dream boat docking in. Well, I used to be obese, but I'm, I'm you know, I chilled out. No, you look great. Yeah. You look, I must say, you look good. You do. Yeah, we're, we're working out all the time. It feels, it feels good. And you work out with a hot chick trainer, right? I'll, I'll talk about this. Oh, Irene, she's, she's a good friend of mine. She's married for a long time. She's very close. Well, no one's asking she's about your love coming. life with her, Mike. I'm not saying you're having sex with her. I'm just saying uh, that's a convenient excuse she has, the way she can get out of fucking you, but I'm uh, married. No, Mike. no, no, no. That would never happen anyway. She's just a great, great friend. You know? All right, so you're not going to take advantage of her. You're not a cad. No, I'm, I'm a good guy. You know what I mean? I, I mean, understand. If somebody's married, they're married. That's it. There's no... no uh, 
It's like they have a barbed wire fence around them. You know now, have you saying? gotten have you gotten laid since your weight loss? No, I'm working on it though. I think I may come close. <laughs> what What was the year you last had sexual intercourse? Just, let's just say the 20th century wasn't too bad. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, listen. You're, you're, I like. You know what? This is why you're a great comic, Mike. Because you're honest. I love that about. No, it. I always tell the truth about it because you know. I mean, come on, I, you know, I'll put it this way. Hookers were, were, ran rampant in my life in the 80s and 90s. I understand. I understand. Year. And you liked, uh, you liked uh, some marriage of hoochie, right? And some liquor and maybe oh, some yeah. Coke? Well, no. Those days are done odd, Those days are done. I'm saying they're done, but you did enjoy those things for a while. No, no I, I, I love pot more than anything. Pot was awesome. Because yeah. I can sit there and look at a pencil for an hour. It's cool. <laughs> what did he say? Sit down and look at a pencil for an hour. It was cool. I, oh. I, no, I thought it was cool because, oh, guys, I actually, I'm so excited. I actually shot an episode of Louis yesterday. Okay, and I'll explain that. Louis C.K., of course, has one of the biggest hit shows on TV. We've all been on the show here. Oh, wait, just me. Uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> go ahead, Mike. What, would, what did you do on the show? It was weird, Art, because, like, uh, that was the first thing I did with Louie in a long time. Actually, it came out of... It's a television show, show, Mike. It's not a movie. Oh, no. No, I know. Actually, right. the thing, it came out of... That night, we did the, the benefit for Rick Shapiro. That's Great right. Show, right? I saw, that's the last night I saw you. The casting director from the show, Gail Keller, was there. She called me on Monday. She said, Louie's doing an episode. He wants to put you in. Can you come, come tomorrow? And he just casted me as me. You know, I, even though you have lost weight, I question your showering abilities because I, when I saw you the other night, I gave you a hug and you still smell like a sharp Romano cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, being, that's being Italian. I, you know, I'll never get rid of the provolone smell. You know mm, what I, mean? no, I don't think that's being know. Italian. No, I think that's a lack of... <laughs> if you smell like cheese and you don't work in a pizza place, it's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So what, what was your uh, role yeah. on Louie? I can't really talk about it a lot because you know how they are. They're very strict over there. But you'll, it's going to add to No. I don't know that. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so in other words, it's it so is. secretive. Are you part of like a season cliffhanger? I, 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 it kills Lou. I think it's the first season. First Not season. First, season. first episode, I think, of season five. Oh. So you, and you can't say what you're doing. It. No, no. But it, it's going to be fun. Art. It, was a good, it was the first time I've seen him in a long time. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to open up to the panel. Joe, any uh, any questions for the great Mike Bichette? I'm just pissed that I've never been on Louie all of a sudden. You'll get really, on. this is my first time, too, Joe. I auditioned last year, November, and you didn't even, even get a call back. And yeah, just, me either. Nope. I auditioned once, and Todd Glass got the part as a just annoying guy on an airplane. Oh, I really? Nailed, I could have nailed no, that. I thought Todd, <laughs> Todd Glass played the part of Joe Matarese, the comedian. <laughs> No, but Joe, you're not, you're not an annoying guy, though. Uh, I am to look at that guys. spin. Well, look at that spin. Thank you. Uh, no, I think, think I am. You're, cool you're, the, you're always been a cool guy. Like you're the laid back guy that I that I know forever. You've never been annoying to me one bit. I love you. I don't think so, anyone annoys Mike Buschetti. Though. Oh no, that's not true. Who annoys? I, I, well, no, no. well, I knew Mike uh, on the show for a couple of years when people would come in who sort of oh, wronged yeah. Mike. He was very, very upset with them. Very, very, very. Joe, I turned to Joe Pesci for sure. At least his level. Of well, he, he doesn't like people who are condescending towards him, and I've seen that uh, some comics have. You know, it seemed like Mike was mad at them, and he he claims he treated them in an arrogant way. Really? Yes. Oh yeah. The yeah. buttheads. He There's doesn't all... mind if you make fun of him because you make. fun Well, of him. I don't he know. Laughs. Yeah, but I mean, he knows. No, I don't mind already making fun. Of him. Not that I don't care about that. It's in love and having fun with people, but. If someone's a dick for no reason, I don't like it. They give you the mean? high hat. They give you nothing. You can, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. They give you the high hat. Chris Cotton, oh, yeah. anything you want to say to Mike Buschetti? Chris, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, Mike? I'm, I'm mad I missed you when you came in. I, I, I couldn't come in that day. Uh, I know, but it's okay. I'll see you soon for sure because I wrote an article, I wrote you in there too and said you were one of the funny guy from Philly that somebody would be watching that. I, Oh, I'm I'm stumbling here, guys. I'm so fun. I'm so excited to write because I'm doing some more writing stuff. I hope to eventually write some TV and film. That's what I'm looking for eventually. Hey, well, uh, yeah, you should I, submit this as a writing. Yeah, show. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm looking at my my uh, piece of the article. What's um, it say about you? A lot of good things. I'm let already read it. First of all, I'm just like oh, I don't want to get caught. Read lead, I'll read it. some of it if you anything. want. I don't want to read it. Fucking thing. I, look at my well, listen. It, it, let, let me read. I'll read some of this article that Mike wrote about. Uh, the show. I'll read my my portion. <laughs> I feel like I'm in England, guys. <laughs> Uh, do your English accent. Everybody loves your English accent. Oh, yeah, I need to hear this. Hello, Chris. How are you? Because we're going to get some horse down in Stout Philly and get some... <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, God, let him finish. Let him finish. 
good. Keep going. Oh, good. Oh, no. I'm going to get some horse down in South Philly. That's it? What do we want to eat? <laughs> what happened? Man, that's a horrible one. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> that's a bang, well, bangers, and, what about bangers and mash and stuff. Hey, the bang is crisp because we're going to get some whores down in South Philly and get some steaks and then, and then throw some whores against the fence and bang them. <laughs> Why Jesus South Philly? Right. Oh. Throw some whores against the fence. Jesus. You want to warn fat these whores. I heard South Philly, I heard, is kind of a rough place, but I'm used to rough places because fat guys like making go anywhere because... You they know, can? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a wild guess here. You didn't play an English guy on the episode of Louis. <laughs> no, I don't care. No, I had a good time, but I, it was... He just I, can't... Well, listen, he can't tell you what he did. He can't tell you. All right, here's the article. I'm in the witness, witness protection program. Here's the, here's the article that Mike wrote for uh, Inner Bang. Artie Lang is a man with many talents that has worn many hats in a business where if you don't, you'll be long forgotten for his time on the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> what? Writing two NY Time best-selling books to Fat to Fish and Crash and Burn, his own movie, Beer League Comedy Central specials, he has done it all. <laughs> Even when he has having hard times in his life, he has still came back and topped his last project. The Artie Lang Show was on DirecTV for two years, period. Artie has entered a new domain. Now that the world of podcasting, period, although still in its infancy compared to TV and radio, is very popular. <laughs> really? <laughs> With the likes of Adam Carolla and Mark Marin and a lot of people in between. I think his podcast, Ari Lang Uncensored, has hit, has hit written all over it. How about that? Mm -hmm. Not only. With his years of talent and experience and millions of his fans, is Ari at his candid best besides Artie, period. Another driving force of the show is his po producer, the great Dan Filato, spelt like fellatio. <laughs> a, a veteran producer and great talent, Dan worked for the legendary Steve Dole in Chicago, and because of his ability as a producer and all-around good, Dan has befriended the likes of Harry Eater and Bill Murray, just to name a few. Uh, By uh, Harry uh, Eater, you meant Shearer, right? Yeah, I spelled it right on a thing. Uh, it says Eater, okay. Harry Eater. Period. Dan is a guy you want on board. Any successful show he proved. That on the Artie Lang show, besides Dan, another comedy gem is the great James Flippin, who is not only a great on-air personality, but a brilliant board operator who created many comic moments on the Artie Lang show on Direct TV. Rounding out the cast, our veteran comic from America's Got Talent, Letterman, and his own <laughs> podcast, Fixing, Talent Letterman. <laughs> Fixing Joe, the great Joe Mattery show is a great part of the show. He is quick great to listen to has great stories and bring a lot and bring a lot of the comedy table <laughs> and rounding out the show is philly's own chris cotton chris is a very funny whited fun supra like it able ugly. it got ugly guy that whited. always brings the house down in the world of podcast vc skies are kings to go to artiequitter.com to scribe to scribe Artie's podcast is Monday, Mun to Thur. Get to now the best of Artie Lang, Raw and Uncensored by Mike Boschetti, sent from my iPad. Yeah! Yes, yeah. baby. Thanks, guys. Now, Mike, when, when someone reads that caliber of writing, uh, is there any editing at all? Does it go through an editing program? Do they, do they, do they just say, <laughs> no, look, they, this is, this is printable. on me. Right, they did a spelling on me for sure. Oh, they did, it. but has, they, they probably say this is printable as is. <laughs> has the New yeah, Yorker I mean, called yet, Mike? What? <laughs> has the New Yorker called yet? New York. I mean, I'll get to that eventually. I'm, I'm not, Dan, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to develop TV and film. That's my goal. I'm telling you, I will. So, I'm based on this article, out. you feel you'll get a film deal to write a script? Spelling bee well, too. Nobody was watching you. I'm serious. You nobody was listening to watch. Look what happened with Louie. I mean, I, I didn't expect that. It well, do you, you have any ideas? Know, I mean, yeah, but that's you acting, uh, being hired to write a script, another skill entirely. Oh no, I would definitely, I would definitely take a workshop on screenwriting and then. Oh and, well, then that makes format. sense. Okay. So, so in other words, if a producer in Hollywood says, "Mike, we want you to write a big movie," you would agree yeah. to take a workshop on writing. No, I would have somebody come in and write with me that, that has, has some experience. So then, what going. what would they need I would, you I would for? Find, like, I would find like Bob <laughs> <Lee> Mandel. <laughs> Right, but, what, but, like Bob Bob Lee Mandel. Mandel. but Mike, what would they need you for? Well, if, someone else is going, if someone else is going to write the script, what do they need you for? 
maybe to change, maybe to, you know, the, the, I'm a good idea, man, maybe to flush it out below me, but the thing is that, you know, that I'd be hiring them, so they'd have to listen to me. But why would know. they do that? So basically what you're hoping is someone reads an article like this and says, Mike, we want to hire you to hire someone to write a script. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. And your guys, first thought is Babalu Mandel, who I assume costs a lot of money to write a script. Well, well, if, if he's going to bring Bobby in, it's going to cost us some dollars. Or I believe me, I'm ready to go. I don't care. I, I don't. It, no matter what it takes, I'm a fearless. Now, do you care. have any ideas for a film? Oh yeah, I've got a bunch of different things for a film. Give us an idea. Show. Give us it like a buddy comedy. I, I me, me, Joe, and Chris Cotton, the three of us. Okay. Uh, let's Ghostbusters. Let's, no, no, no. We're, we're, we're more hip than that. That's, you know. Uh, what do you think of the new female cast for Ghostbusters? Uh, I think it's unusual uh, to, at best. I don't know what's going to happen with it because. Very diplomatic, Mike. Well you are a done. very shrewd Hollywood. <laughs> it sounds like you don't love the idea, but you're very shrewd in the way you're putting it. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I want to go to California. So I, that's my L.A. mode. Like, well, I'm not really sure if the. Circumstance, you know, I know what to say to believe me. No, I don't. I don't know what you said. <laughs> now, you went to California this last trip by yourself? It, I, I went out there with Carmine and uh, my friend Carmine and uh, Frank. We started shooting, started filming a documentary on me. Oh, you uh, you know, did? It was fun. Yeah. Well, you shot, shot a it. documentary on yourself in California. Yeah, we shot it at the UCB at Sunset and Flappers and Burbank and some other stuff. Now, what is the theme of it? Just you? Good we went to. It was fun. Right. What are you doing? Mike? Oh, Mike? Yeah. What are you doing? It? I can't I can't hear you guys. <laughs> Mike, did you do anything, James? Mike, can you hear me now? Hello? No. I'm... Mike, you can't hear us at all? No. Well, how come you keep answering me when I ask if you can hear me? <laughs> It sounds—it sounds like, guys. Yeah. It sounds like the scene where Michael Corleone is going to shoot the Turk and the, and the Irish guy in a restaurant. But it, it sounds like both of us are <laughs> talking to each other. No, I don't know. I, I don't know what Dan. Dan's, what's his name? What's flipping is great at breaking my balls. I love him for it. Yeah, we're not, wait, are, James, are you doing something to break his balls right now? Mike, in other words, he is. <laughs> Mike, everything I'm saying, you're hearing, and I'm hearing everything you're saying. We're having know, we're having like, a conversation. It sounded like a train went through a subway tunnel. And it sounded like Mike went to the, was going to the bathroom. That's what I thought. Yeah. We, no, no, no. I thought I, I heard I, him I, say, I, "Oh God." Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh God. I'm right on top. Here it I'm comes. Stay next to my my my, uh, my bed right now. Were you taking cell. a shit? <laughs> no, no, I did that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is the look on your mother's face when she has to clean up your bathroom? I clean everything now. I'm, I'm a gentleman. I, I got in shape. I That's to wrong. <laughs> Do you still leave your plates and uh, uh, forks and stuff under the bed? No. no, no. What no. about the laundry, Mike? You know, it was a big contention between you and I. Oh, God, the laundry. Yeah, the laundry's simple. You just throw it, you know, it's done in seconds. It's easy to do. You, you know, do your laundry. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't do your laundry. Well, I had not had to do it if I need to. Yeah, but, Mike, you're 54. Why would you want to do your laundry now? Well, you know, it's it's not too bad. You know, I did it when I was in my twenties. You know, I mean, I, I, had to, I, I can take care of myself. You I do a load every twenty four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just I, so you can't tell us what the documentary is about. No, it, yeah, it's about uh, it's about weight loss and other stuff, trying to help people. It, it was. Oh, that's good. So, you, <laughs> do you did you document yourself losing all this weight? Oh, boy. Mike. What is that? Mike, what are you, are you doing? Dropping, are you dropping those in? Oh, God. That's, That's him. him. <laughs> what did you just do? You sound like you relieved yourself with something. No, 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 no. I don't know what James, I don't know what James is doing over there, but he's doing a good job of it. He's I'm not right. doing anything. <laughs> That's Every it. once in a while we say something and you just go, Ugh, yeah. No. Oh, God. Are there like um, icicles of jizz on your lower stomach? <laughs> Joe, what are your thoughts on this? Very odd. <laughs> <laughs>
It's a very odd. It's, it's become a very odd interview, Joe. It's so funny though. I don't know what is going on. It sounded like like you were in a bath stall next to us, and you're like, "Oh God, what's that guy doing next to me?" Like it sounded exactly. It got echoey <laughs> and an "Oh God." Chris, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I'm gonna come out and say it, uh, Mike. Are you drinking off, Mike? I, I think somebody. Oh no, no, not at all. Are you sure? No, no, I'm good. I'm just the by evidence. Myself. The evidence is saying otherwise. I'm gonna be honest with you. The evidence <laughs> is putting as your factors. sex. Hey, that's a good question. Since you're healthier and you do look a lot healthier and thinner, has your sex drive gotten bigger? Oh God, yeah. I feel like I'm 18 years old again. It's amazing. Do you really? That's nice. But what, now, what no. do you what do you do with all the sexual energy? Oh God, I release it majorly. <laughs> well, so you 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 masturbate? Oh, baby, I want oh you. yeah, oh yeah. No, I feel, I, at my age, I feel like I'm half my age. I'm like, this is great. I feel like, you know, but every time I see hot chicks, I got to just, like, you know, just yeah! uh, hunt myself down a little. What, uh, would you consider, you know, t I know you want to be a TV star. Would you consider much like Bruce Jenner changing yourself into a woman to get on television? No. No, I love myself as a guy. No, I can't. Do you no, think that's disgusting? I don't want to burn in hell for it either, really. Yeah. I, well, I, do you I think, think he'll burn bad. in, you think Bruce Jenner will burn in hell? Well, God wants you to be who you are. You know what I mean? He didn't want any, any alterations. Okay. He, he would have made him a woman if he wanted that to happen to him. So you're very against this, religiously, yeah. morally? I mean, well, that's, that's his choice, really. But, you know, let God you know, put him where he's going to be someday. I don't, I don't know what to say. Okay. Very interesting. Mike, Mike, what about when you dye your hair? Do you think God looks favorably upon that's you right, changing Mike. yourself? Yeah, Good point. Yeah, well, dye my hair is a lot different than chop my weenie off and put it in the patch. Not your weenie. All right. Okay, listen, Mike making some excellent points. Mike's a very religious guy. I am. God is the boss, guys. We're just loyal employees. What article are you working on now? <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. I said God is the boss. We're just loyal employees. Oh, uh, we're what? loyal employees. Oh. What article? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you should also write bumper stickers. Did you come up with that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, what, no, artic what article are you working on now, Mike? I got some other stuff in the works. I've been doing a lot of stuff for uh, Tarot Bang and stuff called StuffDudesLike.com. I wrote an article for a, a, a new place that launched called Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, what do you call it, uh, Buzz.com, about Valentine's Day. That's coming out then. Oh, okay. So about you're an expert on that. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm an expert on not having a woman, really. But <laughs> yeah. Now, you write it from the perspective of not having a woman for Valentine's Day? No, I wrote about from a Charlie Brown, but yet romantic point of view that I am. Explain that a little bit. What do you mean? What, what's the Charlie Brown point of view? I, well, I am Charlie Brown waiting by the mailbox, but when that right girl comes along, she's going to be swept off her feet in a carriage. Or whatever. Like, she's going to be throwing rose petals on the street. I'm going to be making out with her like there's no tomorrow. And, you know. Is there chloroform involved in you? <laughs> no, no, no. no, I actually are. Uh, I think I found a perfect woman for you, and we're going to get this done. Out Who's of, this, out, Mike? Who? Out, out of all of us, we have to put every piece of muscle we have in Hollywood together. Adam Adarish, me, you, Chris, Dan. Who? James, every, every, what do you call it, Giada. Oh. Yeah, well, listen, I met Giada at the Tonight Show, and she seems grossed out by me. Uh, no, that woman do that to just see what you think. And they, no, no, uh, no, no, no. Look at a young Tony Francioso over here. Explaining <laughs> women. Is Giada single? Giada just broke up with her, her guy. She just got a divorce, and I don't know if you've noticed on The Tonight Show, we had a connection. She cooked, and I ate her no, food. Uh, uh, we're going to make you sing her an Italian love song. Matarese, we we, we got to get him going with this, because, you know... Dude, I'm not the one... I mean, I'm fine. C compared to no, you, uh, quite frankly, I'm like, I'm goddamn Don Juan. We got to no, get you I, laid. I know. I'm working on I just want to have to cash that. I want to be able to, you know... Just, we well, don't need just a kid. You want to get a hooker? I'll get you a hooker. Anybody no, no, can get no. that. I just like having the money to go out with cool chicks and just have fun. And, you know what I mean? No, well, you know, you should go out with a chick where it's not all about money. I think I do agree with you when you look like me and you. I'm not. I'm lumping myself in this. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we got to liven up the conversation and we got to buy him a nice piece of veal. But uh, Chris Foley did great with a woman, though. Chris Foley? Farley. Oh yeah, Farley. He was a he's a regular George Clooney with women. That's why he was. That's why he was so happy when he died with a whore no, and a heroin I, needle next to him. I think no, I Chris, I happen had... to know Chris. Chris was a very Chris. Uh, probably you can make an argument that Chris Farley was the funniest person who's ever lived. Oh yeah, a comedic genius. And yeah. I I got to know him. I shot uh, the last film he ever made. I, I, I worked with him, and I hung out with him briefly before, during, and after that. 
And Chris was a very sad man. And I think a lot of it had to do with not being accepted by women. And uh, I think women broke his heart because they're all slutty oh. fucking bitch cunt whores. Yeah, but I thought he had like MTV models and, uh, and things like that. Yeah, you know, believe me, nothing substantial mm. to it. Nah. No, no. Chris was a very lonely guy. It was it was oh, actually God. sad. Funny, most talented guy ever, but very lonely. Yes! So don't I model yourself I after that. I thought women would throw him. I mean, he was, he was that yeah, funny. But that doesn't mean thought, anything. That doesn't mean woman, anything. Oh, yeah. Women are always saying they love funny. They're, they love funny guys. They don't like, love funny. They, lo they don't. They, they love money or if you look oh, yeah. good. If you, they're very shallow. No. Like men are shallow. <laughs> look, human beings are shallow when it comes to the sexual attraction. I'm the same thing. When I go on Twitter, I'm, I'm, I'm faster than Jesse yeah, James. I'm, the trigger I know right that. Now. Believe me, I know you're probably shallow. No, I'm super shallow. I'm shallow. When it comes to like... Twitter, I'll be on there and be like shooting like Jesse James. Like, no, 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 Great no, no. story. Great story about Chris Farley uh, that I heard from a former writer at SNL. Chris Farley was dating this smoking hot chick who was a, an assistant of Lorne Michaels. He always had these cute blonde assistants. Whoa. And uh, she was his girlfriend. He was way into her, like in love with her. And she started dating Steve Martin behind Chris's back. Oh, no. Everyone knew about it except Farley. And Farley got wind that she was cheating on him, but didn't know who she was cheating on. Just figured it. I heard it might be one of Lauren's rich friends. Didn't know who it was, but it was Steve Martin. Oh, so God. it gets to like the boiling point. And Farley walks into Lauren Michaels' office. And Adam Sandler and Spade and Chris Rock and uh, maybe uh, Norm or Fred Wolf, a great, great writer. I think it was them outside the office. And they hear this conversation happening. All of them know it's Steve Martin, who she's dating behind Farley's back. Farley doesn't know. He just knows she's cheating on him. So this is the conversation they hear. He's screaming at Laura Michaels and he says, finally, well, listen, this guy may be better looking than me. This guy may be richer than me. But there's no way this guy's funnier than me. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole and they all of them just burst out into laughter. Oh, <laughs> No, and, no, uh, you know, uh, obviously they picked the one guy that why. might be funnier. I, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I think on the funny scale, Chris Farley's way funnier than Steve Martin. But the yes. fact that any other guy, <laughs> he'd be right no matter what. <laughs> But he picks the one guy. There's no way he's funnier than me. And it was Steve Martin. <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> a legend of comedy. A legend. No, I know. He's going, that's like, oh, God. I mean, and supposedly all the guys laughed. I, I was told that by one of the guys. That's hilarious. <laughs> he may, be, he may be richer than me. He may be better looking. But there's no way he's funnier. Do you think he meant that as oh, funny? Or no. He, he no, seriously that was, said that? That's what was funny about it. Uh, they were all like, uh, Chris, guess what? Check on the third one as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but anyway, in my opinion, Chris Farley oh God, way funnier than Steve Martin. Way funny. Just pick up uh pick up cheaper by the dozen too and you'll oh, see who's Jesus funnier. Christ. Well, well, Chris would have Chris would have had I think if Chris would have had a longer life, he definitely would have been he would have been running run it wouldn't have been that far behind him. I don't know what you just said. Listen, Mike, uh <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, but no you got Hey Mike. Yeah, you got to come in live one day again. No, I will. Just let just let me know ahead of time. I'll be there for sure. I'm when are you what, now? What do you what do you want to plug, buddy? Plug something. I'm actually got go to uh, what do you call it? the Intero Bang I N T R O B A N G about all these article and stuff. Stuff dudes like dot com Pittsburgh uh, Buzz dot com, and I'll be at uh, I'm doing a Jewish Temple Saturday with. Where? <laughs> Saturday with uh, Tony Landolfi and South and Howard Stern show. I'll be at the New York Comedy Club Monday night, or February 9th, and that's it, guys. And, t and Terrabang is where we can see this article you wrote. And what about, what's your website? Oh, uh, Mike Boschetti, B-O-C-C-H-E-T-T-I dot com. I'll be at the New York Comedy Club on Monday, February 9th, and I'm doing a gig with Sal on Long Island, Jewish Temple, Saturday. The great Sal I'm Governor Tony Landolfo. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you. I'll definitely talk to you guys soon, and thank you so much. You all right, brother. All you guys. We love, love you, man. Guys. We love you. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Great Bye. job on the article. We love you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Doesn't that sound like a weird booking? What? H him yeah. and Sal Governale at a Jewish temple? Very weird. <laughs> That's a very odd yeah, they've worked. They work together, though. They work together. temples? Uh, well, I don't know what temples, but they, they have done a lot of gigs together, Sal and, and Boschetti.